Behold, the Tesla Cybertruck. This is likely gonna be the only towing and roadside review you see on the Tesla Cybertruck because they are so difficult to get your hands on. We were fortunate enough to have some friends here in St. Louis, a company by the name of Restla, allow us to use this Foundation Series Cybertruck, so let's get into it. Okay, so on Cybertruck, we're gonna start on the doors because true to fashion, Tesla likes to be a little bit unconventional and they've outdone themselves this time because there are no door handles on the Cybertruck at all. So, we're going to take our key card, we're gonna swipe the V pillar as always, and on the front doors, your button's here, it pops the door. On the rear door, button's there, it pops the door. So to open the front doors in the Cybertruck, you'll customarily use the electronic release button here in the front of the door. Press it, it'll electronically actuate the latch in the door, it'll kick the door open, you can open the door. If for some reason you're stuck in the vehicle, and there's no low voltage power, and this does not work, there is a backup or a mechanical release right here in front of the window switches. You'll simply pull that up, vehicle will open. Now coming around to the rear door, again, we have a electronic release here on the front of the door panel. That's the one you'll customarily use. And if for some reason somebody's stuck in the rear of the vehicle, this little rubber tray is down here in the bottom of the door pocket. You'll remove the rubber tray, reach down here, grab the yellow strap, pull it. It will mechanically release a door and then the door can be opened. It's pretty easy. If for any reason you need to get in the bed of Cybertruck, as long as the vehicle's unlocked, you can open the tonneau cover right here on the bed rail. It's a leading button all the way to the front. The one all the way towards the back of the truck will drop the tailgate. The tailgate is a manual close, so if you press a button, it will not pull the tailgate up. You gotta do that manually. To close the tonneau cover, simply press the middle button, the tonneau cover will come back. Around here on the front of the vehicle, to open the front trunk, there's a button hidden up in here. <laughs> it's a little bit unconventional to find. It's right there. When you reach up there, you'll hit that with the tip of your finger. It won't be a deal where you traditionally pull like that. You're gonna reach in there and hit that with the tip of your finger. It'll open and close the front trunk. Now on the Cybertruck, there is an oddity here. This is a 48 volt low voltage system, but when you're doing a low voltage jump start, you can wake it up with a 12 volt box. In typical Tesla fashion, they do have a remote lead to open the front trunk. And right here by this reflector slash marker light, there's a rubber plug up in the spender. You'll pull the rubber plug out and pull this wire out and we have our positive and our negative lead. So you'll take your portable jump source, make your positive connection to the red, your negative connection to the black, energize the jump source and it will open the front trunk. So once the front trunk is released, you're gonna wanna pull this panel up really slow because it's on actuators. You do not wanna damage the actuators. From there, all you'll need to do is come here and remove the service panel, start on one of the ends and then work your way across. This panel does fit tighter than the panels in the cars. If you're used to those coming out, they come out really easy. This one requires a little bit more effort. So once the service panel is out, you will see that Tesla has put our connections in here close together for us. They're really easy to get to. They're really easy to make a connection, have your jump box down here in the front trunk and it not go falling down. So what we'll do is we'll come in here, make our positive connection over here on the right side to our red lead, our negative connection back here on this ground lug. Keep in mind they are close, so we wanna make sure that our terminals do not touch and we do not have a shorting event. From there, we're gonna go inside the vehicle. And on this vehicle, we're going to leave this connected until the screen comes on inside the vehicle, which could be two to three minutes. So on other vehicles, a little bit different. On this one, we are gonna leave it connected until that screen turns on. Once the screen turns on, it's an indication that the vehicle is going to recover the low voltage side of the system from the high voltage, and we should be good to go from there. So we have our jump source up there energized and we come in the vehicle and we can see that the center screen is in fact turned on. So that's an indication that the vehicle is going to recover its low voltage battery. From there, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put my foot on the brake and I'm gonna see if the vehicle will shift to drive. It's indicating the vehicle will shift to drive. That makes me happy. From there, I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna disconnect our jump source from the front trunk area. We're going to disconnect negative, then positive, and then we're gonna reinstall the service panel close the front trunk and we're good to go on a jump start. The last thing we need to do here is just take and push these wires back up in this hole in the fender and reinstall that rubber plug. Good to go. So when we're loading the Tesla Cybertruck to a carrier, they've actually made it really easy on us on this vehicle because we're going to the tow hooks here on the front of the vehicle for a front connection. They're closed tow hooks, so you want to, you can use one or both tow hooks, Tesla says. 
and you'll want to use some nylon product on here. You don't want to take and try to connect a, a winch line hook directly to that and scratch the hook up. So put some nylon product on there, preferably a short loop, connect it, connect it both if you want to go long. The one thing Tesla does state in their literature is that this vehicle really needs to be on a 21 foot carrier. And it's mainly because of the length of the vehicle and the weight of the vehicle. This vehicle goes around 8,000 pounds on the heavy side. We're not going to take it to a scale this time because to be quite honestly, we don't want to get mobbed over at the Road Ranger. They've already said everywhere they've driven this vehicle, they're getting mobbed and we're trying to avoid that. So we'll take Tesla at their word that it's 8,000 pounds. So 26 K carrier with a 21 foot deck is going to be your minimal solution. Let's go around the back and we'll show you where the rear connection point is. Okay, now around here on the back side, Tesla is recommending to use the chain slots on the trailer hitch. So this is likely gonna be a mini J situation. Hit both of those. The cover comes off with a, simply a coin of some sort, a nickel or a quarter, I use a quarter. Turn those quarter turn fasteners and the panel comes off straight down. So you will pull the vehicle up. And again, we are not retaining any EVs, especially the Tesla Cybertruck on the winch. So we have all of our connections made to the vehicle, be it the front or the rear. You're gonna to wanna to draw on your line tension before you shift the vehicle into transport mode because you do not want the vehicle rolling away and ending up somewhere you do not want it. From there, once your line tension's drawn in and you have control of the vehicle, you're going to come down here in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, tap the vehicle icon. From there, you're gonna come over here and tap service. From there, you're gonna to select towing. From there, place your foot in the brake. Transport mode lights up white. You'll select transport mode, it'll turn blue. The vehicle can now be loaded to the carrier, strapped down, delivered to the service center. So around here on the side of the Cybertruck, you will see that the wheel covers have already been removed. They are plastic like they usually are in the Tesla vehicles and they are easy to remove by hand. Just get those off, eight point the vehicle down. So a couple things to address when handling the vehicle in a towing capacity. I'm gonna read something directly from Tesla's service manual as I do with every Tesla vehicle. And it is in regards to how far and how fast you can move the vehicle. So transport mode is only intended to allow for winching cyber truck onto a flatbed truck or repositioning the vehicle out of a parking space. While in transport mode, the tires are allowed to rotate slowly under three miles per hour or five kilometers per hour and for a very short distance, less than 30 feet or 10 meters. Exceeding these boundaries can lead to significant damage and overheating that is not covered by the warranty. So what they're telling you is that if you take the vehicle and you roll it outside those boundaries, you may have a thermal event in one of the drive motors and that's a situation you absolutely do not want. The other thing here with Cybertruck is if Cybertruck is completely dead, in order to steer the vehicle, you are going to need to do a low voltage jump start. The reason being is Cybertruck now has a steer by wire system, whereas the other Tesla vehicles, it went into a box and then you had a power steering assist there. So in order to steer Cybertruck when it's dead, you'll need to do a low voltage jump on it. And Remember, we are dealing with a 48 volt system and we're jumping with 12. So the steering is gonna be very slow to respond because we're in a low voltage situation. So take your time in steering it. It's gonna require a little bit more effort, but it will get done. When working with the Tesla Cybertruck and it's been towed for an out of range event where the vehicle has been driven completely out of range on the high voltage side and it gets towed to a supercharger. Sometimes you'll run in a situation where when you reach the supercharger, the high voltage side is down and the low voltage side is down. What is gonna happen in that situation is you're going to do a low voltage jump on the vehicle. Once the low voltage jump is initialized, the screen inside the vehicle does come on. You will then plug the vehicle in on the high voltage side. From there, you'll let the high voltage side take over, determine high voltage side is in fact charging through the screen in the vehicle. From there, high voltage will recover low voltage. You can disconnect the low voltage jump from the front trunk area, put the service panel back in, close up the front trunk, and the high side should take over and recover high voltage and low voltage. As I've previously said on other Tesla models, a hung charge cord event is not very common, but it can in fact happen. So we're gonna show you how to disengage a hung charge coupler from the charge port in the vehicle. And we're gonna start over here in the quarter panel. Okay, so coming around to the back of the vehicle with the tailgate down, this panel is gonna to have to be removed and this panel does fit snugly. You'll see that I have the tether out right here. And the reason why I have it hanging out is because it's usually stuck back here in the quarter panel. I don't have really big fingers, so I was, I was able to get a pinky back there and fish it out. But for you guys that drive trucks that got them big sausage fingers from lifting up blocks and stuff all the time, you wanna get a hook tool or a plastic panel tool or something and, and fish it out of there. You can get it out, it is doable. You'll 
kind of have to maybe get a flashlight to find it, but you can in fact get it out of there. So before you do anything else back here, once you have the tether pulled out, you're gonna wanna go inside the vehicle and ensure the vehicle is no longer charging. So go into the charging screen, go to charging and then tap stop charging. From there, once you know the vehicle is no longer charging, you'll come out here, you'll take the tether, you'll pull the slack out of the tether, which is a very small amount. Once you pull the slack out of the tether, you will disengage the charge coupler from the charge port and the side of the vehicle. And that's it, you're done. So we're inside the cyber truck and if for any reason you need to move the vehicle around under its own power, you will need to initialize it. You'll take the Tesla key card and you will swipe it up here in front of the cup holder. Either one of these trays has a receiver, push your foot on the brake, swipe the key card. You'll hear that tone. From there, it will indicate over here in the left-hand side of the screen that it is ready to be shifted into driver reverse. So shifting in the Tesla Cybertruck is a little unconventional. In the Model 3 and Y, you used to have a shift stock over here. And in the older X and S, there was a shift stock over here. The shifting has been moved to the center screen in the Cybertruck. So you'll see indicated over here in the left-hand side of the screen, this little car icon. When you wanna shift the vehicle into drive, you'll simply swipe the car icon up. It'll indicate drive. If you wanna go into reverse, you'll pull it all the way down. It'll indicate reverse. When you wanna go into park, simply press the P here. It'll place the vehicle back into park. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying, what if the center screen doesn't work? Tesla in their infinite wisdom has already thought of that. There is a secondary shifting selector up here on the roof of the vehicle. So. When it's not illuminated, you'll swipe it, it'll turn on, and from there you can push your foot in the brake, select drive, reverse, park as normal, and the vehicle will shift off of the secondary shift selector as well. So that's everything you need to know for Tesla Cybertruck. For more information, like, subscribe, follow us on the rest of our social media channels, and we'll see you on the next one.